This is a presentation about pertussis. We're going to review the facts about whooping cough and the vaccine. Whooping cough is infection of the air passages and lungs by the bacteria Bordetella pertussis. It is very infectious. 90% of people living in the same house who are not vaccinated will become infected. It's spread when an infected person coughs or sneezes and we get the droplets on our hands and then touch our own nose and mouth. 50% of infants who catch pertussis get it from a parent. And being in close contact is really just being three feet away from somebody for 10 hours a day. So basically all kids in school, teachers, anybody you work with is at a high risk of transmitting the infection to you. Whooping cough is a little bit unique in that people are infectious for three weeks, up to three weeks before they appear ill. So it's very easy for people to spread the illness and not realize that they're sick. Once people actually start with the infection, they'll have a runny nose or a low-grade fever for a couple of weeks. So most people don't realize that's what they have. They think that they just have a mild illness. The cough starts at about two weeks and it's a very characteristic cough with big, big, big inhalations in that produce a sort of a characteristic whooping sound. And at the end of the presentation, there is an audio of what whooping cough sounds like. The cough continues for about six weeks or longer for some people, and then there's a prolonged recovery period for another four weeks in which you're more vulnerable to getting ill. The thing about whooping cough is that it's a very common cause of chronic cough. In fact, 20% of adults who've been coughing for more than two weeks have pertussis. In California, we're going through a pertussis epidemic right now. The latest figures from the Department of Health in California are over 6,000 confirmed cases with over 200 infants hospitalized and sadly 10 infants have died. This is a graph showing pertussis cases by the year in California and you can see that we are basically at our highest rate since 1950. And so even though there tends to be a peak of pertussis every three to five years, we are far above what we should be expected to be. Marin County, California has one of the highest rates of pertussis in California. There were 321 cases reported as of October 26th, which gives us a rate of 126 cases per 100,000 people. That's the second highest in the state, much higher than other counties such as San Diego County for comparison or Sonoma, which is close by. So let's talk about some myths with pertussis. One myth is that it's a mild infection. Well, it's certainly not for children. 10% get pneumonia, 2% will have seizures, one in a thousand will die, and 50% of children under the age of one will be hospitalized. This is not a mild infection. What about myth number two? The vaccine doesn't work. Well, before vaccination was available, there were over a quarter million cases of whooping cough a year and more than 9,000 deaths, mostly children. Vaccination has reduced the risk of catching whooping cough 23-fold. So if you get vaccinated, you're 23 times less likely to get whooping cough. The problem is, is that we need to have a large percentage of people vaccinated to win the fight against pertussis. And that's because it is so infectious and people can spread it for so long before they even know that they're sick. So experts believe we need to have at least 92%, probably more, of the population vaccinated to stop the spread. California was one of 10 states that didn't require middle grade boosters, and that may have contributed to our outbreak here. The law has since changed, and now next year, all kids will need a booster to go into middle school. We also have a very high rate of vaccine refusal or delays in certain counties in California, and that may also be a contributing factor. Just along the lines of how effective pertussis vaccination is, you can see here the arrows show when the pertussis vaccine is given to infants. And you can see that the rate is very high when children are less than one month old and when they're one month old. And as vaccination starts, the rate starts to drop and then 
bottoms out and stays lower from six months onwards. Myth number three, I've had pertussis, so I don't need to get vaccinated. Well, whooping cough is a bacteria, just like strep throat. And just like strep throat, you can get the infection again and again. So there's no protection from a previous infection. This is the vaccine per, uh, schedule for pertussis. There are vaccinations required at two, four, six, between 15 and 18 months, and again at four to six years. And now in California, we need a booster at 10 years, as do uh, 40 other states. And then the recommendation is to get a booster every 10 years to keep current. Is the pertussis vaccine safe? There is no association between vaccines and autism or any other neurodevelopmental concerns. There have been more than 10 large studies that have shown this. There's no relationship to SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. The vaccine does contain a minute amount of aluminum as an adjuvant. There's also no thimerosal in single dose vials. And if you want to know more about vaccines and the specific ingredients, please go to my presentation on Vaccines 101. The vaccine safety data that's been reported to the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System in the United States shows the risk of severe allergic reaction is basically zero. There have been no cases reported in 80 million doses. The risk of brain inflammation or encephalitis is zero to 10 per million doses. And a study of more than 13,000 teenagers done here in Northern California shows no increase in neurological problems, blood disorders, allergic events, or new onset of chronic illness after the vaccine. So we know that this is a really very safe product and that it saves lives.